I don't know. I told you I was so much happier with this week's bell ringers, and then I read this one. I was like, oh, Lord, help us. Yes, dear. Okay, so my gut reaction was to do 8 times 12 and get 96. Because then I would be going from feet to inches. Feet to inches. Because um, to go from feet to inches, you multiply by 12. However, well, that was my gut reaction, too. And that is one of the answer choices. That is not the correct answer. That is not the correct answer. And the reason that's not the correct answer, it would be if the problem just said feet. If it said uh, what in cubic inches is equivalent to 8 feet, it would be fine. The issue is that we're cubic. So really we have... 8 feet cubed. We don't just have 8 feet. We have 8 feet cubed. So we need to undo that, get it just to feet, and then multiply by 12. So how do you undo something that's been cubed? We are going to take the cube root of 8, which is what number? It indeed is two. Okay, so let me explain that again because, my goodness, this one is a doozy. Although, you know, Tuesday is Aspire Tuesday. So this is a kind of question you might see on the Aspire. The trick is the word cubic. If it had, if it had said square, I would have to take the square root. Since it says cubed, I have to take the cube root. So the cube root of eight is two. Okay, now I know I have two feet, and Sam is right. To go from feet to inches, you multiply by 12. So 2 times 12 is 24, so that's 24 inches. So let's say that all again. I had to take the cube root because it was cubic inches. I mean cubic feet. I got it to normal feet. I converted it to normal inches. And now I've got to take it back to cubic inches. So I need to do 24 to the third power. And that's going to give me my number in inches cubed. So I don't know what 24 to the third. Thank you. 13,824, which is answer D. Anytime you see cubic, you have to convert, you have to undo it, get it from cubic back to just normal feet, convert to inches, and then cube it again. I know that sounds silly that we're undoing the cube and then eventually redoing the cube, but you have to do that in order to do this conversion. Of course, that's how we start off on a Tuesday. I was really wanting something fun. Oh, well. Okay, if you got blue notes, get out your blue notes. Um, if you have your white notes from yesterday, it does not hurt my feelings if you throw this page away. So yesterday we took two pages of notes. Show me the first page. The page with the menus on it, we did great. Everything was awesome. We were good to go. Nothing was wrong with the first page of notes yesterday. That's why you didn't get a new one. It was great. There's something wrong with the, the side that I did with the X's and the Y's, which then made the back wrong. So you probably you tried the problem in the back. You might have done one and two correctly, but I doubt you did three, four, five, and six correctly. We shall see. Okay, there were three important vocab terms from 7-1 that I wanted you to remember. What is one of the vocab terms? Scale factor. What's another one of the vocab terms? Ratio, which is a fraction. And then the last one... Proportion, so ratio is a fraction, and then proportion is when you set up something, you have like fraction equals a fraction, and you get to cross multiply. And then scale factor, we talked about doing like models, like my model Eiffel Tower to the real Eiffel Tower. 
And then we spent a lot of time on scale factor yesterday. Ellie, just give me your notes for a second. Okay. So everything with that was great. And everything yesterday with similar polygons was great. I, I, there's no way I could have messed that up. That's still the similar symbol for similarity, the little squiggle. We still write a similarity statement, which looks like this. That is what I would call a similarity statement. To me, it looks just like those congruent statements you had to write with triangles. So Harrison already knows from earlier in the year that when it's in that order, the order matters. So A goes with R, B goes with S, C goes with T. He already knew that. He knew the order mattered. The only difference is we're talking about similar triangles, not congruent triangles. Similar triangles have the same ones. What do they have in common? Yeah, that's the answer. Angles. Similar triangles have the same angles. I agree. And then, but they don't have the same side lengths. Obviously, AB is way bigger than RS, but they're in, it's a vocab term. The sides are blank to each other. Proportional to each other. So that proportion we figure out when we start comparing side lengths, like we did yesterday, I see Ellie's work. We started comparing like this side and this side, and we got three over one. This side and this side, we got three over one. And we kept doing it to all the sides, and we kept getting the same number over and over. And what were we calling that number? What is that number? Still a vocab term. That number that I'm calculating when I compare the side lengths. It's called the scale factor, and if you didn't know that, you better write it down. Scale factor. And then we talked about that in the last section, the scale factor was normally a decimal, but it's okay in this section if you get the scale factor as like a bigger number, because it depends on which shape you put in the numerator. Did you put the, taller, the bigger one or did you put the smaller one? And as long as Sarah's consistent, it doesn't matter. She's just got to, if she always puts the tall in the numerator, she doesn't want to suddenly swap and on the last comparison put the tall in the denominator. Okay, so everything was good with that. Everything was good on the back. And even the bottom was good. So this was our similarity statement. Our calculations showed our scale factor. If we can't find a scale factor, we could every single time, thankfully. There's our scale factor. It matched. So therefore, we wrote a similarity statement. If you can't find a scale factor, there is no need to write a similarity statement. And more importantly, if the angles don't match, you don't have to do anything anyway. Because Carrington was smiling to me. If, if the angles don't match, they're not similar to begin with. So everything was cool and kosher till here. Obviously, you were half asleep, so maybe you missed what I giantly messed up on. Everything was good on this page next. Here's where I'm talking about crazy. And I'm surprised no one called out my craziness. Okay, we can't just do x equals 3 and 8 equals y plus 1. Because those two shapes aren't congruent. They're similar. They're not supposed to match. A and Y plus 1, they're not supposed to be the same lengths. They're just supposed to be proportional. So yesterday when I did 8 equals Y plus 1 and X equals 3, and then I did the rest of those examples, I was crazy. That's not how it goes. That's crazy. That would only work if they were congruent. And they're not congruent. They're similar. Okay, so what we should have done, and I would say there are really two steps. The first step would be scale factor. Can we find a scale factor? And what that really means is using sides that don't have x's and y's, can we find some sort of a fraction that we can write down when we compare the two? Yes, we can. What should we write down? 
6 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 2. But if you can't reduce your fractions, if you want to leave it at 6 over 4, it's still going to end up giving you the right answer at the end. So it, it's okay if you can't reduce fractions today. Okay, so our first step is to find the scale factor. Our next step is we're going to take the scale factor, which we found was 3 over 2, and we're going to set it equal to, and we're going to set up our own proportion. So my second step, I should have written the word proportion. We're going to make our own proportion. We're going to use that scale factor and use the remaining sides to set it up, cross multiply, and solve. So for instance, I could do 8 over y plus 1. Are there any questions about this? Okay, so this is why we spent that time in section 1 cross multiplying. So I do 3 times y plus 1 and 2 times 8. So when I distribute, I get 3y plus 3 equals 16. So 3y equals 13, and I'm sorry, it's not a pretty whole number today. y equals 13 over 3, and that's fine. We found the value for y. Are there any questions about how Ms. Compton did that? I found my scale factor, and then I set my scale factor equal to this other ratio that I wrote, which in my case was 8 over y plus 1. I'm not done, though. I know I said there were only two steps. I'm going to do step two again. I'm going to do 3 over 2 equal to, and it needs to be a piece with the axis. So I'm going to do x over 3. When I cross multiply, I get 9 equals 2x, so 9 over 2 equals x, or if you want to put 4.5, I do not care today. So we find the scale factor, and then we set up a proportion. We find the scale factor, and then we set up the proportion. Okay, and just to make sure you got it, you know we're about to do it three more times. And then, of course, there are two on the back that are yours. I know. Okay, so I would love anyone but Derek to help me figure out the scale factor for number four. My first step is the scale factor. Uh huh. Anybody? I sure would. It doesn't matter. Let's do 10 over 5. That sounds good to me, which is the same thing as 2 over 1. I don't care if you don't reduce it. However, since I'm wanting to set up a proportion, I'm going to leave it as a fraction, or else it's going to kind of get complicated when I try to cross multiply and there's no one in the bottom. So I found my scale factor. My step two is I'm going to set up a proportion. So I'm going to say 2 over 1 equals, and then I need something else to put. 4.5 over x. I did 10 and 5 and 4.5 over x. And then I cross multiply, and I get 2x equals 4.5. So x equals, I don't know what that is, some decimal. Are there any questions about that? Yes, dear. I asked you if that was the right answer this morning. Else. I don't know what you were asking me. You were wanting me to do math, and I hadn't had my coffee. So, I don't know. I was not saying anything at that point. You were more motivated than me. Try the next one with your group. Try the next one with your group. Make sure you know what you're doing without me, and then we'll move on. I copied that one from your notes. That's fine. No.
If I I did this, then I'm wrong. Look, I did 4.5 over x, so left over right. Shouldn't I've done 10 over 5? So it should be that. It should be that, yeah. So I keep forgetting to say this. We're going to do 7 3 tomorrow. Review on Thursday. We're testing 7 1 to 7 3 Friday. We've got to move on in life. <laughs> Talk to your group if you don't know what you're doing. Is that a plane on your phone? At least one person should. Okay, let's go over it and make sure we're all on the same page. I know the scale factor is 40 over 30. If you want to reduce it to 4 over 3, you can. If you don't like reducing fractions, you can leave it as 40 over 30. The second step where I set up my proportion, I'm going to do 4 over 3, but it's okay if you did 40 over 30. It's still going to work out. Equals x plus 15 over 18. When I cross multiply, I get 72 equals 3 times x plus 15. When I distribute, I get 72 equals 3x plus 45. What was 72 minus 45? So 9 equals x. On the test, I'm going to give you most of your points for you set up. You figured out the scale factor. You set up a proportion. Even if you don't solve the proportion entirely correctly, you know I'm going to have other questions from 7-1 checking your cross-multiplying skills. I'm mostly going to look at, did you set this up? Could you figure out the scale factor? Okay, number six looks like the easiest one, but it's actually probably the most difficult one. 
can you figure out the scale factor on number six? So my step one, which was scale factor, I can't do it. There are not two sides with numbers on them. So forget that. I've got to go straight to step two, which was a proportion. If I want to set up a proportion, I could do whatever what. Not Ayana, not Derek. I would love to hear someone from Emmy's group. I need two fractions. What are my two fractions? Can we have a question? Didn't you say like if we didn't, um, if we didn't um, it would if you did 40 over 30 on the last one and then half so you divide by 2 and then 20 over 15 I would have to check your work it should have worked out the same okay let me set up this proportion and then I want to look at that Okay, somebody help me set up this proportion. Somebody. If I do x plus 1 in the numerator, what number from the other thing needs to go in the denominator? 8. Thank you. If I do 3x plus 1 in the numerator, I need to put 20 in the denominator. So, yay. This one's actually much easier than the others. I just, if I set up these, I cross multiply. I didn't have to find a scale factor. My life seems so much easier. I'll get 20x plus 20 equals 24x plus 8. If I start solving, I get 20 equals 4x plus 8. Subtract 8. We get 12 equals 4x, and Jarrell is right, x goes equal 3. And I don't know why I'm using Christmas colors this morning, but apparently it's a Christmas kind of day. Yes, dear. Who did that equation wrong? I did it in half. Because yeah. uh, I did it right now. Let's see what they did wrong. Say it again. Who did the fraction in half? Uh -huh. 20 over 15. Who did that one? So I can see what they did Catherine. Catherine, can he look at your work? He wants to see what, what happened. Okay, are there any questions about this? Then if I were to take Elena's worksheet and I were to pay, play a line, she already knew how to do one and two from yesterday. In fact, she probably had it on the one I told her she could throw away. Three, four, and five look like our first couple examples. Example six goes with problem six. Example six goes with problem six. All you have to do for the rest of class is these six problems. I would love to know your answers and we'll check them. I'm going to go over it tomorrow so it has to be done by tomorrow or else. Six problems. Let me know if you get stuck. I would love to help you. Did you find it? Thank you.